Rakesh Chen. Uh, some of you may, might know I am a pediatric neurologist uh, at Fortis Hospital, Gurgaon. I have been working here for the last 10 years. So today I am going to talk about headache in children. I mean, many people believe that headache is not a problem of children, which is not true. And particularly after uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, you must have realized children right from you know. Uh, five years or even younger, and up till you know teenagers, adolescent, you would have seen lots and lots of kids who had problem with headache, migraine, tension headache, stress headache. So all type of headaches that you could think of, uh, we we got to see. I mean during those pandemics, but it's not only that pandemic. We used to see kids even earlier than that, and we are also seeing in the clinic even now when everything is open. So headache is not uncommon in children. So we'll see how things are, you know, are going to pan out in the subsequent slides. So I'll talk about briefly. I'll try to finish this, you know, uh, uh, talk 20 to 30 minutes maximum. So you could schedule your time accordingly. So how to approach a child with headache? And the biggest concern in doctor's mind, in parents' mind, is that you know, is it a tumor? We are missing something. What are the other differentials that are potentially treatable, and how do we manage and prophylaxis, if any? Can children have headache? No. <laughs> yes, I answered already. And there is a huge, you know, uh, plethora of symptoms depending upon which age you belong to. I mean, the symptom of headache could bother you. Sometimes in smaller kids, it's not that headache is not there. Like even in infant, we have seen. Uh, extreme irritability, vomiting, uh, very bizarre behavior, and uh, sometimes is benign paroxysmal vertigo that could be one of the you know early indicators of uh, migraine later in the life, and uh, you could see I mean how some children could uh, you know try to hide themselves you know uh, uh, covering their head. Uh, some children can have phonophobia, just plugging their ears. Sometimes photophobia is so extreme they are not able to open the eyes in sun or even in the daylight. You know, with the uh, you know lot of flashing. And particularly, I mean, uh, uh, this triggers if you have a tendency for migraine. Uh, let's say if you are driving in the night and you have flash of light coming from you know opposite side, so it becomes really unbearable for those kids and adults. Who have migraine and who have uh, photophobia associated with it? So varied presentation of headache and migraine in both. If I talk about epidemiology, it's not uncommon. <laughs> I can't uh, emphasize enough on it. It's not uncommon. So 10% of primary school kids. It's a huge number. So you could imagine one out of 10 children in a uh, in a class would have headache, and 30% of teenagers. And migraine is the most common cause of headache, even in children. How to approach? As again, in medicine, history is very, very important, and in pediatrics, it's even more important because we have to get most of the information from history, then observation, examination. Sometimes reveal, other times, you know, you have to depend upon your clinical acumen, your history, and observation. So age of onset is really important in headache, and what is the duration? You know, it is acute headache. Headache just started with viral infection. Uh, you have cough, cold, headache. Then we call it acute headache with some viral bacterial infection. And generally, we, as we know the underlying cause, if we treat that in three to four days time, sometimes a week time, symptoms disappear, and we don't talk about it too much. Acute recurrent headache. That's where the penny drops. Acute bad headache when it comes stays for one, two, three days, or even sometimes less than a day. But the child comes back to the baseline. He or she has headache episode again, similar or may be slight, you know, vary in intensity, and again it comes back to the normal. So we call it episodic headache. Chronic progressive is a kind of Headache it starts with this, you know, little you know, sort of pain, some heaviness inside the head, but it gradually progresses over the period of time. 
so that's where we need to worry and uh, it might have some sort of exol or some uh, you know uh, it warrants some imaging if it is progressive in nature then we have non progressive daily headache mixed type stress type or tth we call it tension type headache so again uh, history is extremely important timing at what time uh, you have these headaches uh, early morning headache hai afternoon headache hai uh, or uh, <clears throat> i mean uh, when you are exposed to sun you have headache you are hungry so okay you know depending upon the timing uh, you can have some sort of idea what we are dealing with so we will talk more about it as we go along character of headache continuous uh, throbbing hai uh, uh, or it is you know kind of bound, binding type of headache if somebody has you know uh, uh, put a tight ribbon across your head what is the frequency and duration of headache so we we'll talk about this if it is a single or a first time severe headache then we must think about there is some acute event going on inside could it be ic bleed so we must be careful if there are no antecedent reason there is no viral infection but there is unprovoked severe headache people call it this is the most severe headache of my life then you got to be careful an imaging is is necessary maybe then you have recurrent severe headaches once a month and without any progression so recurrent severe headache it could be throbbing type associated with other symptoms so we call it episodic headache and it qualifies for the definition of migraine if it is episodic it comes back to the normal to the baseline when the child is normal but when the headache is there it is definitely disturbing disturbing the routine of the child may be associated with vomiting photophobia phonophobia maybe family history so nothing is absolute in terms of family history or one symptom is there other is not there so it's a conglomeration of different things so as a clinician we have to put together that jigsaw puzzle to be able to give a correct diagnosis to the family and once we diagnose it i mean then things are slightly easier we could have explain you know how things would go for the child and uh, uh, we can explain the prognosis as well then we have this uh, headache it's you know kind of rumbling type of headache it stays most of the days and child doesn't easily bother i mean if you ask him headache is there but otherwise he can play he can watch telly he can work on computer and uh, there is no kind of you know deterioration in his academic progress as well but it bothers so that's how the chronic you know type of headache looks like uh, but if it really bothers then obviously we need to look at you know if there is any stress around the family any bullying in the school problem with the teachers academics so here sometimes we need to involve a psychologist then we have this headache every few months then it's every week then days so it's a kind of progressive type of headache if you have this type of headache then you must be you know conscious about exo and that is the only thing we don't want to miss what are the chances in a ch child who you have taken history properly who you have examined properly and what are the chances of missing tumor we will talk about it so this is just a, a graphical uh, presentation so if i take this you know if you just see this you know light yellowish kind of thing that's how the acute headache goes just one off episode acute headache needs medicine to control but then that's it i mean it doesn't repair if headache is very bad so as to hampers the routine then it comes back to normal baseline level so the child stays well for 15 days 20 days maybe month two months then it appears again and then comes to baseline baseline level so it keeps on happening now and again it may vary with the frequency and intensity so this is generally mild we call it episodic headache then if you can see this purple line the child is normal here then some headache is there then some relief then increases the frequency and intensity some relief and then it continues to increase if you look at the graph it's just like you know uh, 
is a stock market sensex like you know it it goes like uh, zigzag but eventually it goes up so it could be an organic pathology it could be your soul could be tumor so we got to be careful about it then this yellow line is headache is there it's not very high in intensity as i said doesn't really hamper the routine but it bothers the child but it stays like this in this zone it never goes up to this point and it never comes back to normal as well so this is your chronic daily headache so timing is again important if you have headache in the morning but from sleep before rising if if you get up i mean it is different if, if the headache is there when you open your eyes but you have not uh, gotten up from the bed it is because of reese dicity if morning headache is there but it it appears when you get up in the morning it is generally low pressure type of headache so you can differentiate what time the headache is coming and you can do some postural maneuver as well like if getting up relieves the headache and coughing and straining exacerbated it, it means it is because of reese dicity it is simple thing we all know but sometimes we have to remind us if lying down relieves the headache it means it is low pressure headache or sinusitis type so examination is pretty standard in neurological examination generally i mean we should not cut the corners at least first time when we see the patient we must examine the child cranial nerves are important including cranial bruise sometime you know the patient they have some av malformations that do surprise us you know sometimes i would say not commonly uh, then posture gait nystagmus cerebellar sign it's a classical neurological exam the one thing i would stress never ever forget to take a blood pressure when you see a child with blood pressure when to investigate not all headache need mri scan neither they need any further investigations if you have done proper work up uh, but certain you know red flags are there who warrants investigation like altered consciousness level recent sudden onset of attack severe headache like you know we talked about acute headache like severe headache of my life type where you are suspecting some sort of bleed you know then we need to uh, look at the image sudden change in behavior school performance papal edema because eye examination generally should be asked for when you are looking at child of headache it is is a good practice Uh, to send to ophthalmologist to do not only refraction but also fundus sometimes you know in pediatric setup we don't have infrastructure to look at the fundus properly with the children without dilatation it is difficult so uh, i mean it is good to get an ophthalmology opinion if there is any squint new squint or if there is worsening of pre existing squint so these are the indication for imaging and when we say imaging we always prefer mri scan over ct scan until unless mri is not available it is not uh, i mean uh, economically viable or if there is a suspicion of bleed then you can get a you know quick ct scan done and try to get an answer any focal deficit on the examination also warrants the image i'll just take you through one case quickly 60 year old girl who had frontal headache early morning type she gets better when she gets up so it means there is raised eye state type of features because when she gets up it gets better otherwise no nausea vomiting examination normal and four months follow up she is not getting worse but she is staying there past history is nothing on examination there is a pathology so i'm sure i mean you would have guessed by now what i'm talking about and uh, i will just i mean take you through uh, the commonest cause of uh, raised ict generally it is you know an ecsf obstruction maybe because of tumor or post hemorrhage in small babies post meningitis or congenital ectodactyly stenosis is not uncommon we do see pretty regularly cerebral edema generally happens after an acute event maybe stroke edema meningitis you know dk so we got to be careful but obviously that is different kind of things a uh, child would not walk into your opd if you have cerebral edema like features then the third category is idiopathic in intracranial hypertension earlier we used to call it benign intracranial hypertension but not anymore because if it goes ignored 10% of children could lose the you know vision 
because of papillary edema. MRI was normal in that case that we had discussed. So here we are talking about raised ICP, or IIH we call it, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. It can happen in the adolescent girl. Sometimes, you know, drug history is very important. Some of this sometimes retinoids, steroids, you know, tetracycline, these kind of doxycycline can cause even vitamin D toxicity, vitamin A can cause, uh, you know, raised ICT. But many times we do not get any history, anything, any clue from wherever. Uh, so you got to be careful. So your thermological examination is very important. Uh, so, and then obviously if it is there, then you have to manage it. We'll talk about uh, uh, migraine and other types of headache because this is uh, one of the most common cause of headache in children. As I said, it is always episodic and it comes back to the baseline associated with nausea, vomiting, photophobia, phonophobia, irritability, pale looking, sometimes tummy upset, a lot of gastric symptoms, gastritis, because it delays your gastric emptying time and uh, a child is generally not able to carry out the routine properly, you know, if they have proper migraine. It will be difficult for them to carry out even if their activities of, you know, interest as well. So, although there are a lot of classifications, but these are the basic things that you could just keep in mind. If uh, children would have, you know, uh, with a headache, if you have uh, four or five of these features, generally you are dealing with migraine. And it's not a new condition, it has been there for ages, right from 400 before Christ, you know, Hippocrates and Thomas Willis also described in 16, you know, uh, you know, early, you know, 1600 centuries. Uh, and they said that migraine is, you know, it's, they used to call it a migraine. It was due to blood stagnation in the dural vessels. And it was also published in this London practice of physics. Migraine affects 3 to 10% of kids and mean age is, you know, 7 to 10 years. And before, I mean, uh, this 20% of kids, they have first attack of, you know, migraine before 5 years of age. This is quite surprising, but it does happen. I do see kids even less than 5 years with migraine. So before puberty, uh, boys and girls are equally affected, but after puberty, girls are more affected. Etiology is again, it's multifactorial, but we do know the exact cause why, whether this is uh, the neuronal irritation that caused the vascular dilatation or it is vascular dilatation leading on to. So it is a mixture of lots of things that can uh, lead on to migraine. And there are lots of precipitating factors. So you got to take a proper history and tell all these things to the family so that family can keep an eye on all these things because you know and and that will help you in the management of migraine as well because hunger can induce it so regular meals are important. Mm -hmm. uh, menstru sometimes menstrual cycle can induce headache. So if it is you know related to uh, menstrual cycle then you could give some aside during that period of time rather than giving continuous social access. Then in some kids, exercise, stress, sleep deprivation, they can all induce headache. So you need to advise accordingly and yeah, you need to find out whether this is lack of, uh, you know, uh, water during exercise, it induces it. So you have to advise accordingly. And some food items, they are also notorious. I'm not suggesting a blanket ban for all these chocolate, cheese, Chinese food, caffeine, etc. But yes, if, uh, if there is any specific for a particular child, then that need to be kept an eye on. And with cheese and with paneer, it's not uncommon to have migraine. Why do some people have it? Not all. Could be genetic predilections, you know. And there is abnormal inhibitory inputs to trigeminal nerve complex. Because that is the main, this trigeminal ganglion is the main thing uh, around which this, you know, all neurovascular network works to induce headache and uh, it, it works around that. There could be some abnormal response to changes in environment like sleep, diet, smells. You would have seen uh, some people, if they smell something you know, strong, they would have headache. Some people, they are so phonophobic. If uh, like, you know, the child shouts in front of them, then it triggers headache for them. Sometimes sun, if they go out in sun without dark goggles, it can induce. So it is a, you know, over sensitivity to certain stimuli which could be normal for other people but here certain people who have migraine tendency they are more sensitive and they have a migraine trigger and they need to act on it so this is a propagation wave of neuronal depolarization it can be you know because of this trigeminal vascular complex 
perception of pain to chemical mechanical thermal stimuli increases and then activation of peripheral and central effort pain pathway so ultimately they all act on this you know uh, this propagating wave of neural depolarization and destabilizing our trigeminal vascular system this is the classification i will not go through it i mean you can see it's on internet everything is available uh, with aura without aura I, i would just stress like in migraine without aura is fairly common in kids with aura it is difficult but yes you can see in teenage girls in you know in uh, older children aura can also be elicited uh, it's not that migraine with aura is not there in smaller kids maybe they are not able to express it properly but in general what we have seen migraine without aura is common in children so i will skip this you know criteria as like two of them four of them can't remember but you just have a basic idea of i mean what are the symptoms that uh, should be around uh, to diagnose you know as a, a migraine just to have a quick uh, you know recap of this you know what are the different type of auras Uh, because migraine is so common i'm sure uh, many of our doctor colleagues are also having and uh, many of these aura features are there like you know in autonomic aura there could be sometimes just lacrimation some pallor and sweating so you don't realize that you know you are going to have headache and maybe after half an hour or maybe 15 minutes you will have headache again after that sometimes cerebral dysfunction aura like irritability lethargy personality change sometimes problem with the speech you don't find words you know to express yourself if you are into that aura or sometimes even in migraine it can happen visual auras are common scotoma spotification you know spectra and all that so it's very interesting actually you know if you uh, if you spend some time with that patient and ask all these things many patients many even children they are so articulate they they will just explain what they are seeing what they are going through uh to give you fair amount of idea so these are some pictures made by children the kind of you know visual aura they have seen before the migraine so again i will skip it and there are other forms of migraine like vascular artery migraine and it's more common in older kids and there are some visual field effects and they would have feature this is slightly you know got to be careful about this vascular artery this is not the diagnosis are uh, to be made in first go you got to give the time and if you have these features like visual field effects are coming you have vertigo or ataxia so these are the kind of features which suggest there is something wrong with your posterior fossa of brain so if i see any child with these features i would suspect exol first and i would get an imaging done if that imaging is normal and if these symptoms are recurrent as you see in migraine uh they come to the baseline level you know and there is a good normalcy for few days weeks or months then obviously they would come in a category of migraine but imaging is done when you are facing these features before you diagnose basically artery migraine then there are familial hemiplegic migraine as well and there is gene responsible for that uh so if you are uh, i mean encountering with these kind of episodes where children get hemiplegic just episodic uh then you know obviously if you get this uh, imaging must also be done and if it is a recurrent phenomena you can ask for the genetic test as well you know just to explain the family and sometimes families are curious to know the cause behind it and there are related syndromes like you know paroxysmal or type of childhood which could be a precursor of migraine in uh, in many kids cyclical vomiting also it could be a variant of migraine abdominal migraine sometimes it is confusing with epilepsy whether this is posterior lobe epilepsy whether this is migraine and there is alice in wonderland syndrome also is part of migraine variant just a quick case caption 10 year old girl with the 18 months history of bilateral headache mainly vortex constant comes on during day not worsening by walking no aura pallor nausea it stays there 5 days a week not over the weekend so you could uh, see where i'm going now uh, so no family history very intelligent child no external source of anxiety stable home not being bullied trying to keep going to school so and uh, the child is taking brufen paracetamol but it is not helping so when you come up to this level you know even the pain analgesic they don't work at all then probably it's not a physical problem you are dealing with some sort of uh, psychological issue or uh, some sort of tension type of headache right or chronic daily headache so that needs to be managed accordingly right so these are the again the classifications 
at least 10 previous episodes fulfilling criteria B to B to be labeled. So just sometimes we see just one episode and I see the label of, you know, a chronic headache or sometimes migraine. No, we need to have you know, multiple episodes to be able to uh, put a label. Headache lasting from 30 minutes to 7 days and at least two of the following pain characteristics, you know, pressing, tightening headache, mild moderate intensity, bilateral location, no, not aggravated by routine physical activity. That's very important because migraine generally gets aggravated if you continue to, let's say, if you're watching, you know, movie or if you're working on computer and if you have migraine headache. So you, if you continue to work, you, your headache will increase, but not in chronic headache. And generally there is no nausea, vomiting, photophobia, phonophobia that you would see in migraine. So there are clear cut distinctions, but sometimes you can have both as well, you know. So migraine can precipitate acute event and in the background you continue to have this chronic type of headache. So I will not confuse you, I mean to go into the detail. So this is your chronic headache. Is it a tumor? That's a question in our mind when we see a child with headache. So there was a study uh, in 8, 8, 815 children in Scotland with mean duration of 21 months. The children with a chronic headache. And neuroimaging was done in 142 kids. And 6.3% already had neurological disorder, some sort of neurological problem. Only three children out of 815, only three children had active intracranial pathology. So you could imagine if we examine the child properly and we do the imaging, the chances of missing is how much, you know, just 0.3 percent. Just 0.3 percent. So if we examine the child early, it's uh, it's rare actually. It's not it's not common. But we obviously, if we skip the examination, if we skip the focal signs, then it's a trouble. So if our examination is good, then we don't need to worry about too much. And even in these three kids, two, two of them had suspicion on the clinical examination. So out of 800, it was the only child who was missed. And that obviously uh, is, is a problem in medical science anyway. We are not 100% in whatever we are doing. And this was the study was done by uh, Dr. Raghu who's a is a headache champion actually in uh, he runs clinic in Scotland so these were the patients who had uh, intracranial pathology so red flag signs as I told earlier as well altered sensorium early morning vomiting any focal pathology deteriorating personality mood seizures sudden change in diffraction squint change in character of headache and I would, you know, reiterate this age less than five years is very important because less than five years old kid, they do not know what the headache is. If they are crying for headache, then we must, you know, uh, make sure that, you know, they have been dealt very diligently. So cluster headache, lots of headache. I'll probably skip this, uh, you know, these classifications. We are running short of time. Again, this migraine and epilepsy is very common, very, you know, uh, kind of overlapping. 8 to 15 percent of patients can have epilepsy, can have migraine, migraine can have epilepsy. So there is a risk of, you know, uh, epilepsy in migraine patient and risk of migraine in epilepsy patient. I think increased by two and a half times than the general population. So about three percent kids with migraine also have epilepsy. So you can see the. So generally people ask when should we do the EEG in migraine patient. In classical migraine, when clinically we are sure, uh, there is no need for EEG. If there is any loss or alternation of consciousness, abnormal movement, progressive neurological decline, or problem with the you know, examination, or there is a frank seizure, then we should do EEG. And the management, lifestyle is extremely important, as I have told you earlier as well. Uh, routine, uh, you know, uh, proper feeding, uh, not staying hungry, plenty of water, sleep hygiene, avoidance of any stimulus uh, like any food items, sun if you have any problem with that. So lifestyle is extremely important and that you could uh, get from their you know, history what uh, the child is you know what, what are the triggers if you know right. Then acute attack management is always you know best I start with paracetamol usually with proper dose, paracetamol, griffin and if I don't win then proxane. 
prophylaxis role of prophylaxis is not huge in kids but again uh, the standard drugs they work very well in it like you know cybelium which is flunarazine sodium valproate propranolol topiramate and so on and there are other therapies which i mean we don't practice too much so that's how we manage headache it's not difficult but we need to spend some time uh, we have talked about it and even in the roman era people would understand like you know if you keep the head cold it would uh, uh, relieve the headache so i told you simple analgesics brufen paracetamol or uh, 5 hg agonist nasal sumatriptan also proven to be benefit in adolescent but in smaller children probably it doesn't work that good there are other triptans available like zomatriptan and rizatriptan you could try but we have to make sure that you know we don't give more than uh, two doses uh, within 24 hours <laughs> what do the prophylaxis do if we have to use it it reduces the frequency severity and duration of the headache and it improves the responsiveness of the analgesic treatment that we are using it improves the function reduces disability and improves the patient's quality of life what are the indication of prophylaxis if you are having more than 3 attacks a month or 1 to 2 headaches per week we should start the prophylaxis or if it is basically artery migraine hemiplegic migraine it warrants the treatment start. so these are the medicines prognosis is generally good and i mean more than 50% kids they grow out of it so counseling is extremely important so childhood headache is common migraine is commonest cause of headache as i told investigations need to be considered carefully not all children with headache needs investigation simple analgesic and rarely prophylactic works well thank you very much for this touch thank you